I promised that I would record an afterword when we'd finished um, recording the story of Moody in Kick, written by Mitch Johnson. I don't know whether Julie will uh, want you to read this as well or hear about it, but it's quite interesting. And I thought it, I'd just include it here uh, uh, in case any of you were interested because he's a very interesting man, Mitch Johnson. And this afterword, this final part of the book is called Introducing Mitch Johnson. Mitch Johnson studied English literature with creative writing at the University of East Anglia. Mitch now works as a bookseller at Waterstones Norwich and writes in his spare time. Mitch loves reading and like Booty is a big football fan, although his chances of turning professional are considerably slimmer. A must read for fans of Mal Peet, Tom Palmer, author of Football Academy. To grow up with stories like these is the beginning of finding another world lying at our feet. Khalid Abdallah, star of The Kite Runner. Fast paced, funny and involving. Mitch Johnson is a brilliant writer. Anjali Joseph, author of Saraswati Park. These are all books that you might like to get hold of yourself and, and perhaps read. They're all very interesting. And there's a short question and answer with Mitch here as well. And the first question is, Mitch, we'd love to hear a little more about what inspired you to write this story. And Mitch says, the spark for kick came when I was working in a sports shop and found a crumpled energy gel sachet in a shoebox between a brand new pair of football boots I couldn't help but imagine who had left it there and what kind of working environment would force someone to consume a product normally used by endurance athletes. The idea crystallized a few weeks later as I channel hopped between match of the day and a program protesting against the use of sweatshops. The outrageous disparity between top flight footballers and garment workers compelled me to do something about it and I began to work on kick the same evening. Here was another question. What research did you do while you were writing Kick? Researching sweatshops is a difficult business. Companies spend huge sums of money to ensure we only see what they want us to see. Their immaculate branded products. However, there are lots of authors, charities, investigative journalists and documentary makers reporting on working and living conditions in the garment industry. And these offer invaluable insights into the lives behind the logos. Having never been to Jakarta, I made Indonesia and its capital a focus of my reading and drew on an earlier visit to Mumbai for a sense of the chaos of an Asian metropolis. While Jakarta and Mumbai are vastly different places, the trip allowed me to experience many things, the oppressive heat, the endless traffic jams, the stifling pollution, the round the clock cacophony, the masses of people, the explosion of cultures, the wealthy living alongside the destitute that are all characteristic of both cities and would later help me to visualize Budi's world. Did you ever find it hard putting yourself in Budi's shoes? <laughs> My life is not like Budi's. I do not know what it is like to go hungry or to work in fear of violence or to live next door to destitution. I have never set foot inside a sweatshop and yet we also have everything in common. To have dreams, to search for happiness, to want a better life for your family. These are fundamental human traits that we all share. And when you focus on our inherent similarities rather than the circumstantial differences that separate us, it becomes so much easier to see things through the eyes of others. Budi's life is tough, and there were many occasions when I did not want to confront it any longer. But problems rarely get better by pretending they don't exist. And I took heart from the people for whom sweatshops are an everyday reality. My hope is that this book will make these people more visible and kickstart an important conversation. Exploitative labor practices are a global problem, but empathizing with its victims is a crucial step towards change. If you felt the heat of the factory, 
flinched at the swish of the rotan or bled a little bit on the inside while reading kick, you are already part of the solution. Which football team do you support? <laughs> Growing up, I was a huge Newcastle United fan. Supporting Newcastle United is the polar opposite of being a glory supporter. There is nothing but heartbreak and despair. Nowadays, I'm a lot kinder to myself and enjoy being a neutral, although I followed Real Madrid closely while working on kick. Cheering them on to two Champions League titles was a fantastic experience especially as both finals were won against Atletico Madrid. What's the best goal you've ever scored? Oh, that's easy. I only ever scored once for my childhood team, Billing United, and it was an absolute worldie. The ball came out to me on the edge of the box after a corner, and I hit it first time lobbing the keeper. The crowd, about a dozen parents, went wild, collapsed politely. As a defender who never ever scored, I didn't have a celebration, so I think I just ran around a bit. It obviously affected my defensive duties because we went on to lose 4-2. <laughs> Booty's grandma tells him amazing stories. Were there any stories that inspired you growing up? My favorite book as a child was The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Juster. I love the way just a plays with logic and language, twisting the everyday into the magical and making the rational seem nonsensical. I loved it so much that the school librarian let me keep the copy I'd borrowed. My grandparents also inspired me. Aspects of grandma's character were drawn from my own doting grandmother, and my grandfather always had lots of stories from his time at sea. I always loved to hear their stories, Grandparents are real-life time travelers. What can we expect from you next, Mitch? Well, my next book will be about a boy called Oscar and how his family is pushed to breaking point by the after effects of war. It will be similar to Kick in the sense that I'm tackling a serious issue with warmth and humor. So you can expect video games and a militarized pug, as well as tough decisions and lots of bravery. There's a note here about Amnesty International that might interest you guys. Amnesty International UK endorses KICK because it upholds and illuminates many children's rights. Children have the right to be protected from work that harms you and is bad for your health and education. If you work, you have the right to be safe and to be paid fairly. Amnesty International is a movement of millions of ordinary people around the world standing up for humanity and human rights. We try to protect people wherever justice, fairness, freedom, and truth are denied. Human rights are universal and all children and adults have them, no matter who we are or where we live. Human rights are rooted in values that include truth, justice, freedom, safety, and equality. They help us to live lives that are fair and truthful free from abuse, fear, and hardship. But they are often abused, and we need to be alert to stand up for ourselves and for other people. We can all help to make the world a better place. You can stand up for human rights too. Take actions for individuals at risk around the world at www.amnesty.org.uk forward slash actions. Find out how to start a youth group in your school or community at www.amnesty.org.uk forward slash groups forward slash youth. Or join the Junior Urgent Action Network at www.amnesty.org.uk forward slash JUA. If you are a teacher or librarian, please use our many free educational resources at www.amnesty.org.uk forward slash education. If you're in the UK, you can write to the address or call the telephone number below. Amnesty International UK, the Human Rights Action Centre, 17 to 25, New Inn Yard, 
London EC 2A 3EA or telephone 020 7033 1500. Email all lowercase sct at amnesty.org.uk website www.amnesty.org.uk and there's some acknowledgements here. Writing is a team sport and there are so many people in need of thanks for getting kicked to where it is today. To my parents, David and Christine, for your encouragement, support and love. To my brothers, Vince and Howard, for the countless hours of street football and FIFA Pro Evo International Superstar Soccer 64. Ah, those were the days. Mum and Dad, sorry for turning the garden into a dust bowl during our attempts to recreate World Cup glory. I've been lucky enough to have many brilliant teachers over the years, but special thanks must go to Karen Ellis for pushing me to follow a creative path and making me feel like a writer when I was not. To Claire Griffiths for being so receptive when I first mentioned the idea behind Kick during one of our supervision sessions. To Jay Willis, BJ Epstein and Jacob Huntley for reading Kick when it really wasn't ready to be seen. Your feedback improved the novel immensely. Thanks also to Josh Judd, who has always taken an inexplicable, some would say unnatural interest in my creative endeavors. Many thanks to my fantastic agent, Felicity True, for being Booty's biggest fan from the first whistle. Because of your passion, I know Kick will always have the home advantage wherever it goes. I cannot imagine a more energetic, enthusiastic team than the one I became a part of at Usborne. Thanks to Rebecca Hill and Becky Walker for your editorial guidance and for understanding what I was trying to achieve. Above all, thank you for believing in Booty and me. We will never stop kicking. To Sarah Stewart and Anne Finnis for being the eagle-eyed coaches who picked up on my mistakes along the way. To Amy Dobson, Stevie Hopwood, Alicia Bonser, Sarah Connell and Liz Scott for all the marketing and PR goodness. To Catherine Millishope for designing a beautiful cover. And Sarah Cronin for threading this beautiful the, for threading this beauty throughout the novel. There's a few mistakes here, my friends. Thank you to everyone at Usborne. You have made me dream and you've made my dream come true. Oh, heavens, sorry, chaps. Finally, my eternal gratitude goes to Harriet, who's definitely not a glory supporter. Thank you for remaining undeterred by the defeats, for always having a team talk ready, and for helping me to celebrate the victories. I hope this book is some consolation for all those evenings and weekends it forced us to spend apart. You were always on my mind. There's an Indonesian glossary here uh, for some of the words that we've used in the book. I don't know whether you would like to hear them. I'll, I'll read them anyway. It's not a very long section. It's just called an Indonesian glossary. Budi and his friends are Indonesian and live in one of the poorer areas of Jakarta, the capital city of Indonesia. They speak Indonesian, known as Bahasa Indonesia. There are several words in the novel which are in Indonesian and whose English translation can be found here. Anjing, dog. Bapak, father or respectful term for an older man. Berak, to poo. Ibu, mother, or respectful term for an older woman. Kain, stiff cloth wrapped around the waist, usually worn by women in Indonesian villages or by the very traditional. Kurang aja, literally less educated, but used to mean idiot. Martabak, sweet or savory stuffed pancakes. Nenek, grandmother. Nusa Kambangan, an Indonesian island which houses several maximum security prisons. Pemolong is a scavenger or a rubbish picker. Rendang is a spifi, uh, spicy beef curry. Rotan is a cane. 
Siri, beetle or betel, a plant which is chewed for pleasure. Tiga dua satu, three, two, one. Tikus is a rat, wajan is a wok. And that is the end of this book. It was first published in the UK in 2017 by Osborne Publishing Limited, Osborne House, 83 to 85 Saffron Hill, London EC1N8RT, England. My name is Peter Cartwright. This has been an informal reading, totally for educational purposes. No profit has been made out of this at all, and the uh, reading has only been meant for Julie Peake's classes, and I thank you for listening. Thank you very much, and best wishes. Goodbye.